And we thank you, Lord, for it tonight. And all God's people said, hallelujah. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, per usual on our Wednesday night services, we just jump straight into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, what about praise and worship? And to that I say, well, the longest praise song in the Bible was all about the word. Amen. Psalm 119. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to jump straight into the word tonight. But before, before we welcome up my good friend and anointed man of God, Pastor James Moffat, who came to bless us tonight. Come on, give him a hand. When we were uh, in Tampa together in May for uh, Ministers and Leaders Conference, the Lord spoke to me and told me, make sure you don't lose that connection. And so I said, Lord, how do I do that? So the Lord instructed me to have him come preach and minister to us. Amen. And um, for those who don't know, sometimes it's tough me and a pastor finding fellowship. And somebody says, well, why don't you just find another pastor? Well, I hate to tell you, but not all pastors are created equal. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, but when you find, you know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 that they returned to their company. Sometimes you got to find your company. Amen. And so uh, the first time Pastor James and I met, I realized he's my company. Amen. And my wife and I were so excited because he and Pastor Cheryl, we have the same spiritual DNA. Believe in God for the same thing, the shaking of the Inland Empire. Amen. From top to bottom, from east to west. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I believe God's connected our ministries together. So tonight has spiritual significance for me. And we're so grateful to have him here. He's actually going to be here tonight. And then the next two Wednesdays, he'll be ministering. Amen. And we're going to have such a great move of God. We'll be packing out this room by that third Wednesday. Amen. And God's going to do mighty things. Hallelujah. And his church is going to be jealous by the time we're done. Amen. Because we got to hog him for three weeks. So we're excited. But before we get into the word tonight... Uh, of course, how many were here our first Sunday in this new building this past Sunday? Come on, God did awesome things. Amen. Praise the Lord. It was, uh, I felt it was a special anointing in here on Sunday. It was wonderful. If you saw me at the end there, I got rocked. I was ugly crying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which is proof God doesn't care how you look. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, of course... So the Sunday before that was our last Sunday in the building that we used to gather uh, in off of Highland uh, in San Bernardino. And of course, most of you were there, but for those of you who weren't, just given a bit of a background. And as I began that service uh, two, two Sundays ago, as I usually do, I, I, I preach three services. I preach three sermons in one service every Sunday. I have my introduction, and then I have the offering message. And then I have the main message. So in my introduction, I felt led of the Holy Ghost to take authority over the drug trafficking industry here in the Inland Empire. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth is what? And whatsoever you loose on earth is what? Hallelujah. That's the keys. If you have the keys, that means you have the authority. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It means you're in charge. And so I took authority over the drug trafficking industry here in the Inland Empire. And of course, I'm sure there's still a long way to go as far as uh, dismantling that thing altogether. But I believe that God is going to turn the Inland Empire into a spiritual oasis here in California. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And so when somebody starts talking about how bad California is, they'll have to say, well, accept the Inland Empire. The Inland Empire is full of the power of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And so, but you know, it does no good to talk about the authority and the dominion of the church and not have any fruit. Amen. Amen. The Bible says wisdom is known by all her children. So if you're preaching any form of wisdom, it's going to produce something. Amen. So I kind of took this a little bit from, uh, from one of my spiritual mentors, Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth who uh, those of you who follow his ministry know that he started a church this year 
and uh, obviously they're about six months through at the beginning of their church, and they're already at 500 people on Sunday. It's not a competition, but if it were, they're winning. So we got to pick it up. Amen. But just a couple months ago, their church, of course, meets in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And just a couple months ago, he posted uh, that in one of their afternoon prayer sessions, he took authority over drug trafficking in Pittsburgh. And the next day was a major, major drug bust. I believe it was the largest in the history of the city of Pittsburgh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible says, be imitators of those who through faith and patience have obtained the promises. Amen. So when you see a man or woman of God operating in the power of God, imitate them. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, I feel like preaching. I'm, I promise I'm not, though. I'm going to give you the mic. <laughs> Amen. But so, of course, two Sundays ago, we decided by faith to take authority over the drug trafficking that goes on here in the Inland Empire. We're going to dismantle that devil. Amen. Amen. Run him out of here. Serve him his eviction notice. It's time to head on out. Can you say Amen. And uh, so we took authority two Sundays ago, and in less than 48 hours, I got sent an article by Mr. Mark back there, and uh, the Lord did something supernatural, so I had Michaela put together a video for us. Amen. So go ahead and roll that whenever you're ready, Michaela. And I just feel in my spirit to do this. I take authority. says, wherever the sole of my feet tread, I have given it unto you. Can you say amen? And as I said on, on Sunday, that's the thing about a great awakening. It doesn't matter what's legal. Nobody cares what's legal. They care what's righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. So I feel the anointing. So when God begins to shake this nation to its very foundation and its very core, they can legalize whatever they want. All the people will care about is what's righteous in the eyes of the Lord. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And I believe God is going to flip this state on its head in Jesus' name. You could say he's going to turn it upside down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So... That's a great segue. Without further ado, I'd like you all to welcome tonight the man of God, Pastor James Moffat, as he comes to minister to us tonight. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus the greatest hand clap of praise in the house of God tonight. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God's so good. Such an honor to be here. I'm telling you, the, the anointing is very strong already in this place. Such an honor and a privilege to uh, be here. And I, I was thinking on the way down, there was a lot of things I was thinking on the way down, but uh, I was thinking on the way down, man, what a privilege it is to be able to come and uh, preach to you. And, uh, and I was thinking, man, 
you know, I don't know if Pastor Michael, like he said, you know, he, he, he felt impressed to invite me. And I was thinking, I don't care if he invited me because he wants me to you preach or he just felt sorry for me and was giving me a reprieve from the heat out in the desert. Either way, Pastor, thank you for allowing us to come. The weather down here, you guys may think it's hot, but you, it is hot where we're from. Amen. Out in the desert, I got in my car today, I took it, or my truck, after uh, I had it parked in the parking lot of the church, and it said 138 in my truck. And uh, so, yeah, it was a little bit hot out in the desert where we're from in Indio. And so as we were coming down here, I was watching the temperature drop, and I was thanking God all the way out here for the, for the cooler weather. And, uh, and, and uh, just you may, you may not be thanking God, I was thanking God, and it's a privilege to be here. And I was thinking about the, just the first time that I ever was introduced, and I found out that there was a river church anywhere in California. You know, I felt a little bit like Elijah, God were the only ones, you know. And God is saying, no, there, I always have a remnant of people that have not bowed their knee nor kissed the face of Baal. Amen. And so when I heard that we, we actually had Evangelist Yana uh, out with us, and she was uh, preaching a revival for us, and uh, we had one service that there's a, a pastor that rents the building from us, and uh, they had a midweek service. And so we had an, an off night where we weren't having a meeting. And so Evangelist Shauna was like, man, I'm going to San Bernardino because Pastor Todd was here. Amen. All those, that, those years ago. I don't even know how many years ago it was now. And, uh, and I asked her, I said, if you don't mind, I said, would you mind if I go? And I remember I was still sitting in your guys' old building. I, you know, every time I come out here, you guys increase. Amen. Every time I come out here, you guys are moving higher and higher. Amen. And I, 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 told, I told Pastor Michael, I said, I saw the new building that they're building for you off of, off of uh, the off-ramp of Mountain View over there. Amen. And I don't think that's going to be big enough. Amen. So you guys will fill that warehouse and then some. Glory to God. And so, uh, so I was sitting on the, this side where the air conditioner was really loud. Remember going on that side over there? And I was sitting on, on that side, sort of in the back, because I didn't want nobody to know, you know. I was just there to get a blessing. I'm hungry. Amen. And I'm thirsty, and I'm crying out for God. God, whatever, I want everything. Amen. Whatever you have for me, my cup is lifted up, and I want to be filled to the overflow. Amen. And I heard that. I heard Pastor Todd came down. I said, man, I'm going to be there. And so I came there, and I was, he was, I don't even know how far he got in his message. Maybe it was just his introduction. And all of a sudden, he goes, you, and he pointed at me. And he called me up front, and he laid hands. And all I heard was fire, and I was rolling around on the ground. And uh, that was the first introduction that I had for your church. But I said to myself as I left, because I remember Pastor Michael was walking from the outside, walking this way, and I was walking that way. One thing I don't do, because like Pastor Michael was saying as pastors, it, not everybody's on equal ground. Not everybody has the same DNA. Not everybody has the same heart that, that you know, that, or the same calling or the same anointing. That, and so when I, I was asking God for a relationship in the spirit, that there, there would be one to, you know, that we could strengthen one another. And on the way out, I, I said, God, if this is your will, I, I want to, to meet uh, this man of God. And so what I don't do is I don't try to rub elbows and try to push my way in and force relationship. But I said, God, if this be your will, let me meet him again. And so, on, and so on the way out, I said, Pastor, God bless you. He said, thanks for coming. And I didn't say, my name's Pastor James from the desert, whatever. I just said, God bless you. And I got in my truck and left, or my car at that time and left very, and uh, got on the freeway, drove very fast, like I usually do. And then we had, uh, we had um, I think it was uh, Evangelist Ankit that came down. And, uh, when, and I saw a, a uh, SUV, I believe, that, that pulled in. And out of it came, I saw Pastor Michael. And I know he probably thought I was weird, but it was an answer of prayer. And I, and I just walked up to him and I said, man of God. And I hugged him and I embraced him and I said, thanks for coming. And I just want to tell you, I love you very much. And it's such an honor to be here with you and Pastor Mariah and uh, Brother Wes, Sister Regina, who we love, mighty missionaries, men and women of God, my friends. And uh, it's a privilege to call you that. And it's a privilege to be here today. And it's an honor to be able to bring the word of God. God is good. Can you say amen? amen? Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. And in him there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. God is a good God. It's a fancy way of saying God never changes. Can you say amen? amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. And God is continuing to do great things. And I'm so excited to be a part of, of, of what's going on here.
I've heard, you know, pastors allowed me to, to hear prophecies of that, that God, men of mighty men of God have spoken over his life. And I just told him, I don't know what part we get to be. I just want to be a part, amen, of what God is doing in your church and what God is going to continue to do through the life and the ministry of these mighty men and women of God. So thank you for allowing me to come. I love you very, very much. I consider us family and um, just it's a privilege to be able to be here. Uh, with you tonight. I'm going to talk a, 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 a few minutes this morning or this evening, if you'll allow me to. You know, it's funny, I, I, I see that, that tsunami wave sitting, you know, on there. And, and you know, it, it reminds me of Pastor Michael, you know, said that they did their VBS in here, right? But it, this has been a few years ago now, and I'll share this with you. I haven't shared this with very many people, but I, I've shared this with our church. I was in prayer and I was actually on the, on my altar in my office and I was crying out to God. And in a vision, I got to be careful because then I'm going to start crying. I'll get all messed up. They won't even get into my message. So that was a love sign for me of what God's about to do. I was on my face before the Lord and the Lord showed me a pic in a vision. The Lord showed me a picture. It was a map like laying flat of the United States of America. And from the East coast to the West coast, I saw a tsunami wave just like that. And, uh, and it was starting from the, from the East coast all the way. And it was going in the, and it kept getting higher and higher and higher all the way to the West coast. And I said, God, what is that? What is that? You know, I was like, and I know God's a good God. It's not, you know, but I was like, is that, you know, cause you don't know, you know, and, 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 you know, it's, it's not, obviously we know God's good. It's not cursing anybody that think God doesn't teach by destruction. He, he teaches by instruction. Can you, can you say amen? So, so, and, and so God said, that's the glory. That's my glory. That's the tsunami wave of glory. That's about to hit America again. And, and to be, it's a privilege to be in California where, where this, the Bible says in the last days, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. There's a lot of people that all of a sudden felt an anointing to go to another state. We didn't pastor. Somebody has to stay and fight. Can you say amen? And that's why I love being with you tonight because you're a people of, you're a fighting people. Amen. A warring people. We're not, we're not a people that just folds up and just sticks our head in the sand trying to get rescued out of here. Can you say amen? God's not coming from a hiding. He's not coming for a hiding church. He's coming for a glorious, victorious church. Amen. And so uh, it's a, it's, the Bible says that in the last days, everything that can be shaken will be shaken and only the things of God shall remain. So I'm glad that God has allowed us to be a part of this last day revival and outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I want to start tonight, if we can, from Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. And, um, you know, one of the things, and obviously I don't have to tell you that, and I, I do want to say, I heard, you know, there's, there's uh, people here for the first time tonight. I do want to say, you know, again, if you don't like the way I preach, it's okay, because Sunday you, you, you'll hear Pastor Michael. So it's good. <laughs> So we, we, but we're so thankful that you are here and nothing is by accident. Can you say amen? amen? And so I'm very, very glad that you are here tonight, everybody. And I'm looking forward to our next uh, few services that God is going to continue to build on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 17 and verse six. You're, you're there. I'm trying to get there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, not finding them, this was it, it, just to give us some context of this or whatever, God was moving mightily through the preaching of Paul in the synagogues. That whole city that they were in was shaken by the power of God. People started getting upset and all of a sudden they wanted to try to arrest Paul. And they were looking for him and couldn't find him, but they found uh, uh, a man named Jason And when they searched his house. And it says, not finding them there, they dragged out Jason and some other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted, and now they are disturbing our city too. If you had this in the King James Version, it would say something along these lines in the B clause. They that have turned the world upside down have come here also. Can you lift your hands all over this place as we pray? Father, we, again, we thank you for, your, for the privilege of being able to gather. 
And we thank you, Lord, for a group of hungry and thirsty people. God, that have come out on a Wednesday night, God, not because they're nominal Sunday morning Christians, but because they're hungry and thirsty. And according to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, those are the ones that get filled. Hallelujah. And so we thank you that according to Isaiah 55, 11, that your word never comes back void, but it does accomplish that that it's sent forth to do. I thank you that as your word goes forth, the seed of your word goes forth. God, it is landing on good soil. God, those that receive it with joy and God, Gladness, it shall produce 30, 60, and 100 fold in every life that is in this place tonight. Your people are blessed. Hallelujah. And we thank you for speaking directly to every heart in this place. And we give you the praise and the glory ahead of time in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Now, look, guys, I love this scripture because you, you have to have one of the, we, we give a book away for everybody in our ministry that gets saved. And we've been through, thank God, a lot of books. But Pastor Rodney writes this book. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, he wrote a book called Seeing Jesus As He Is or As He Really Is. And it's important that you see God correctly. Can you say amen? If you see God in a way or like God is angry at you, you'll think you'll read the Bible through a lens that God is angry. But the Bible said in Psalm chapter 2, God is not angry. He's up in heaven laughing at the plans of the enemy. And so God is not angry at all. Hallelujah. God is up in heaven laughing. He doesn't have sweat stains in the pits of his robe. He's not biting his nails down, you know, checking out seeing it like I never knew that that was going to happen. God is in control. Can you say amen? Amen. And I'm glad that I'm amongst my family tonight that know this because it, you, it, the Bible says you got to see, or that, that book says seeing Jesus as he really is. If you see God correctly, you know that we're not victims. Hallelujah. We're victors. The victory has already been won. Can you say amen? So this, this, is, this is the stance that we do everything from. There's people that they, they've actually read about the uh, life of Paul like we're reading about tonight, and they'll say, well, man, Paul's life, you know, if you're a Christian, you've got to suffer. Where, no, the Bible said that, that the blessing of the Lord makes a man rich and adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. And that God is a good God, and that if you're with God, it's not about suffering with Jesus. It is about walking in the victory and making sure that we're bringing what's up there down here. I heard Pastor talking about that Sunday. He said there's a prayer when, when the Bible said when the disciples saw that Jesus was praying and praying in a way that was effective and caused things on the earth to change. They said, man, Jesus, you're praying a different way than we pray. Teach us how to pray like you're praying. Hallelujah. A way that is effective. The Bible says, I believe it's James 5, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman produces great results. Like your pastor prayed that prayer. I feel in my spirit to pray against drug trafficking. And within a couple hours, amen, the, one of the biggest uh, drug uh, bust probably in the history of San Bernardino and Redlands took place. Man, I'm telling you, that's straight out of the word of God from Matthew chapter uh, 16 and Matthew chapter 18. Uh, Jesus said this. He said, I give you power to bind things on earth and loose things in heaven. Hallelujah. When a man or woman of God know who they truly are in the days that we're walking in right now, we know we don't have to worry about the devil. He's under our feet. Can you say amen? This is, what I, this is why I love this scripture because people, you know, when Paul was on the boat, on his way to go see Caesar, as he was told, he had to do. And he was in chains, and people thought he wasn't in control. He was on a ship that was going down. He said, I told you not to come, and you still did it anyway. But because of the angel of the Lord that came from the presence of God that I serve stood by me this night and said, not one person is going to. Man, I'm telling that's somebody that knows who and what they carry on the inside of them. The Bible said that the kingdom of God is not there, and it's not over there, and it's not down the street and around the corner. The Bible said the kingdom of God is within me. We carry, hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah, the greater than inside of us. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And when you know that, the Bible said, he that, but Jesus said, he that believes in me as the spirit, as the scriptures has said, out of his river, out of his belly shall flow those right there. Yeah. Wherever I walk, if it was dead, it's about to change. It's about to become an oasis of life. Can you say amen? Amen. That's what happened in this scripture. Everywhere that Paul went, everywhere that Paul went, he, he turned the city upside down. Everywhere that a true man or woman of God goes, 
they turn a city upside down. There should be an effectual change by a praying man or woman of God. Hallelujah. You, that, that's why I love that scripture in the book, the effectual fervent prayer. If you, if, God, if you don't feel it, God can't feel it. Can you say amen? If, God, if you ain't moved, God ain't moved. But when you pray fervently, you better believe that God is saying, hey, that's my son, that's my daughter, and they know the authority that I have given them, and they are not taking the victim role. They are walking in the victory that I've already foreordained. The steps of a good man and a good woman are already ordered by God. That means he has already gone before you to make the cricket pass straight, and he's just looking for a man or woman of God that believe him to walk in the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I, I love this story. He said, we looked for Paul in them and we couldn't find him. But it's not a story of the church being necessarily persecuted like you would read. You could read it one or two ways. You could read it. The Bible says, you know, we could have certain things with persecution. The Bible, Jesus said, if you've given up anything for me, which Cheryl and I know about that. It's my beautiful wife right here, by the way, who I love very much. This is actually a blessing for us because we've never got to do this before. Usually when I'm, I, I, get, I get an opportunity to speak or whatever, she can't usually come. I want to share something with you. Some of you guys know this, some of you don't. I worked with the Sheriff's Department for almost 20 years. I was a sergeant for Riverside County. The Lord told me at 4.30 in the morning, your time is done, leave. And then he said, if you do it safe, don't do it. And I knew what he meant. He said, if you, if you take your retirement, just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. So I already knew. So I, so I did almost 20 years. I'd be retired right now. Cheryl and I'd be, we'd have, I won't tell you how much money we'd have in the bank. We'd have a ton of money in the bank. And I'm not saying that like I'm, we took a step back. I'm, get, I'm about to give you the testimony of it's, a, it's the exact opposite. That we walked away. That morning I knew I got to lay this down. Because I, God, God wanted to make sure if you're going to do this, make sure that you put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Can you say amen? amen. That God is not looking for a person like he had to go and reassure, re, to reassure Peter and the disciples when they thought it wasn't working out quite the way that they thought it should work out. And they, and they said, Peter, what are you going to do? Peter said, I go a fish. And they said, we go also. He wants to make sure that you got that little boat. He wants you to make sure you get rid of that little boat that you're holding on to just in case this thing with Jesus don't work out. God is not looking for a people that is trying to hold on and have a B plan. God is not looking for people with B plans. God is looking for people that B believe in him. Hallelujah. So we, we stepped away. I stepped away from everything. And it's funny because in the sheriff's department, everybody's, we, they're called the brother. You know, they're brothers. We're brothers. We're sisters. We're real close. People that I mentored and helped reach the position that I got in the sheriff's department turned on me immediately as soon as I told them what I was going to do. Told me I was a bad father. Told me I was a bad husband because our girls were still young, you know. And we walked away, and the testimony is, because all of that, they don't understand, and they're not going to understand. Can you say amen? amen. Don't expect people to, to, to applaud your, your coat of many colors. Amen. Whatever God calls you to do, wear that thing proudly. Amen. amen. If God has called you to do it, he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory amen. by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, you know, there was a, there, uh, it, there's a t-shirt made of it now, but I preached a message a little while ago. Oh, no, it was to our, um, we do a kingdom business meeting on the first of every month before our service at eight, eight o'clock in the morning. I'm going to do one this Sunday. And in that I, I, I taught on more cowbell and I played, I don't, this is not very spiritual pastor. Sorry about this, but that there's a Saturday night live, uh, uh, skit where, where Will Ferrell and he's, I can't even remember the name of the band cause I don't know or whatever, but they're, they're playing a, a, a song and, uh, and all of a sudden he's the, the, the producer, he jumps in and he goes, you know what? No, I got a fever for more cowbell. And he says, you need to, and then he tells Will Ferrell, go get, hit that thing and go crazy, right? And more cowbell and more cowbell. Well, I was preaching more cowbell. You know why? The Christians should be calling for more cowbell. You know why? Because our father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Can you say amen? 
And so I hear this, hallelujah, I hear the flap, flap, flapping of the raven's wings. My wife and I, we, we, she took me because, you know, especially because I got upset because I was talking about the fact that they're trying to take our meat away and doing all of that other stuff. So I told the, my, the, our, our church Sunday, or which was on Father's Day, I'm eating a steak today, praise God. And so we had a steak, my wife took me out to steak, uh, a steak dinner, and then when we got done, we looked over, and if you ever got, got an opportunity to see the mountains where we live, they're very beautiful. It's hot, so don't go now and look at them. Wait until October, and then go, and you'll enjoy yourself. But we went, and then we looked up on the mountain, and on the peak of the mountain there, there was a huge bird, and I thought it was an eagle. Well, it wasn't an eagle. It was a raven. And then I started praising God even more, because if the raven was that big, how big is the blessing that the raven is bringing in? Can you say Amen. It's everything about how you're looking at it. If you think God is wants you to suffer so you'll learn a lesson, then you don't then you don't believe that God is a good God. Can you say amen? But he is. The Bible said in Matthew 7, 11, of us being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much the more will our heavenly father give good gifts to those that are his? Amen. And so I'm, I'm excited to be a child of God. Well, I walked away, walked away from our retirement, walked away from everything, and we never skipped a beat or never took a step backwards. We only increased. Only God can do that. Amen. And then my, my wife recently, like I was saying, she recently, that during the same year for her with the, with the superior court, she was a supervisor in the superior courts over several courtrooms. The Lord spoke to her the same thing. You need to leave. And guess what? And don't take your retirement. Amen. See, we either believe this thing or we don't believe it. See, I, I, it could have been, Pastor, it could have been the fact that I could have said, you know what, I could step away because we still have insurance. I could step away because there's still a dual income coming in. And, it, you know, if God's people don't and all these other excuses. But I'm telling you, we're not up here as a pastor giving lip service. When we say we believe God and we have destroyed every boat and there's no plan B for us, I'm telling you, there's no plan B for us. This is it. Hallelujah. And we have forsaken all to follow Jesus. So that, that's why my beautiful wife gets it. We've been married almost 30 years, 27 years we've been married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys should have clapped better than that because she had to put up with me. So when you look at Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, it says this. The, it was a people in a city that was upset. And they said, the people, we've heard about these guys. Everywhere they go, this has been happening. Everywhere they go, the city gets turned upside down. And guess what? Now they've come here. You know what that shows me? It shows me a church that's not afraid, that wasn't afraid. You know what it shows me? A church that didn't hide. You know what it shows me? A church that didn't close their doors. You know what it showed me? A church that's not ashamed. Amen. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Amen. It's power. I said, it's power. And we carry that wonder working power on the inside of us. Can you say amen? amen. Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, tongue talking believers. Amen. Hallelujah. That God is reserved for this last hour. I believe with all my heart that we're going to see with our own eyes the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Bible says this gospel will be preached and then the end shall come. Right. All over the world. And then the end shall come. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm privileged to, to, to be a part of that, any part. So it shows me two things, a church that's on fire, a church that's not ashamed, a church that knew who they were, a church that was missional and on mission to expand, to occupy. Do you know occupy? Jesus gave us that term, that military term, it's occupy until I come. Do you know that that is a term of takeover? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's actually a military term. That, that God never told us to try to build bridges with cities and try to do all of that stuff that obviously churches have found out that aren't working. Every time you try to build it, you know, ain't nothing wrong with trying to work like that as long as, as that relationship goes both ways. Can you say amen? So, you know, it, it's just, it, it's, it's a shame that, 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 that people of, uh, uh, of the body of Christ have sometimes wanted to lay, lay down things and try to get along with people thinking that that's what's gonna bring them in. That's not what's gonna bring them in. The Bible says there's power in demonstration. That's, that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. The Bible says, Paul said, the kingdom of God is not a lot of this. Amen. But it's power in demonstration. And Jesus even told them, he said, if you don't believe me for what I've told you, believe me for the works that you have seen me do. 
And that, that's a church that we're reading about in, in Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. A church that everywhere they went, they turned that city upside down. And that, it, and what it shows is, is a, 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 a city that got bombarded with the power of the Holy Ghost. And now they're crying out, oh great, those people that have taken over city after city after city after city after city after city and after city have now come here also. Hallelujah. And I thought, you know, I always try to, you know, my, my wife and I were both, we were both in the military. My wife uh, and I, we were both military police officers. We were both in the army. Um, this is a, a, a terrible joke, but she, she, she outranked me then and she says she still outranks me now. <laughs> and uh, so... But the thing is, and not a lot of people know this because they see, they see my wife, she just actually went and got her CCW and everything. She's got all that done. And she is, she's a better shot than I am. And I was a range master for the sheriff's department. I actually trained deputies how to, how to use their, their weapons and qualified them and do all that. And she's actually a better shot than I am. And so even when the instructor, when she went to use her gun, you know, and I got, she has a bad gun, guys, if you had to get her a chance to see it. So, you know, it, and uh, so even when she pulled it out of the case, even the instructor was like, that is a beautiful gun. And then when they saw her shoot, they were like, oh my gosh, like you could really shoot because if you look, that man, look what the Lord has done, right? You look at the outside and you would never know. But another thing that a lot of people don't know about her is she also went through something in Fort Hood, Texas called Mount Training, which is terrorism school. How to clear a city from terrorists. Come on. Come on. She's no joke. Don't let her fool you. But one of the things, when I look at things militaristically, you got to realize that there is something that we, there, there's some, have you, how many's ever saw, a, a, you know, this will, this will put you back a little ways, but how many's ever saw a fight with Mike Tyson in it? You know, in the very beginning, if you remember before he got beat by Buster Douglas, every fight was already decided before he got in the ring. You don't want to know why? Because the opponent was afraid. You know, the one thing, if I, if I was your enemy and I would, that I wouldn't want you to know is I'm afraid of you. And that's the one thing that the enemy is, he's so afraid that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ would find out. That, that he is really, at, at his root of roots, he is really afraid of the, of the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church that God is raising up, hallelujah. The church that, I, I, there's, a, there's a room full of them right here, I could feel it in the Holy Ghost. That know who they are in Jesus, hallelujah. That have just come to a city, they've come to take over a city, can you say amen? So this is what I, I want to read this to you because this, if you could turn to Exodus chapter 1 beginning at verse 8. Is this all right tonight? Yeah. I want to share this with you. And we're going to build on this. But I want, I want, to, share, I want to share this with you because this, this is very powerful. And, and what, one thing I love doing is whatever the enemy is trying to, she, to, to, try to cover, I like to expose. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 1 beginning at verse 8. It says eventually, and this is in the New Living Translation, eventually a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we. Did you see that? Yeah. Do you know what this Pharaoh said about his own people concerning a people that were considered to be slaves that, that were being now ran by him? The Pharaoh already knew. He said, look, these people outnumber us. I, now, I don't have to remind you, remember what the Bible said. Remember that there was a prophet of God when the enemy tried to come and surround them. There was a, there was a servant named Gehazi. He went outside and when he looked at with the eyes of the natural, he looked around and, said, and went and got the man of God and said, hey, hey, I don't know what's going on, but you better do something about this. The enemy is surrounding us. That man of God didn't get nervous. He didn't start praying in speed tongues. He knew something, hallelujah. He walked out and he didn't see out of the eyes of the flesh. He saw out of the eyes of the spirit. Oh, that's what Paul is talking about in the book of Ephesians. I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you would know the glorious inheritance of the saints. Greater is he that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. There are more that are with us than are with him. Amen. You and God are always the majority against any enemy that tries to come up against your life. Amen. Hallelujah. When you understand this fact, no devil in hell can stand in front of you. That's why God, God is looking for a people that is through playing around, that is through playing politics, uh, that is through playing 
Sunday morning church uh, that is through playing nominal Christianity. He's looking for a people that are set aflame uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost going forward to declare what thus says the Lord in this final hour. Let me get back to this. He said to his people, look, those people outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We got to come up with a plan to hold them down. You know, that's all the enemy's trying to do. Let me do something. Let me try to keep them under my, you know, under control. You know, it's called a yoke. I said, it's called a yoke. But God gave us something, hallelujah, to destroy that thing. And it's called the anointing. I said it's called the anointing. The Bible said the anointing destroys, not breaks. I said not breaks, destroys. 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 Every yoke of the devil. Pastor knows this. I, you, you already know what it literally means, and women don't like this. What it literally means is your neck has become too fat for any device that the enemy has to try to put around you. Amen. And that doesn't sound good. You know, a lot of, you know, that it's not, you know, everybody, nobody wants a fat neck unless you know, unless you know what it means, right? <laughs> my, my name is Mo, like if you look at how my name is spelled. See, you know, I know we're family because we, we have a family here whose last name rhymes with our last name. That's right. So our last name is Moffat, but if you look how it's spelled, it's M-O-F-F-A-T-T. -T. So in the they everybody calls us Mo Fat. Right? And I'm doing my best not to try to live up to that, you know. Pastor and I always talk about talk about the fact that, you know, we we're we're getting ready to go to the gym. When is that? It's always Monday. And then when Monday comes, it's always next Monday. Amen. The best time to work out is always tomorrow. Yeah. So but we, so, but the thing about it is, is that in those days or under that understanding, what it means to have a fat neck is to be blessed. Amen. One of the greatest signs, there's two signs that are going to differentiate. The Bible says in the book of Malachi chapter three, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 There is going to be a difference between the righteous and the wicked. And it's two things, two things. The Bible said they will know that we are his by the love that we show one to another. As you're seeing the walls of denominations crash down. It was never God's intent. I said it was never God's intention for denominations to part us uh, and to keep us out of control. Cheryl and I. Again, not bragging, we're, we're invited to come to this event we had nothing about. They're an underground movement. They found out about us somehow. I have no idea. Somebody nominated us to be able to go there. And we were honored to privilege to, and to go. But as we, people came up and they talked to us and they were sharing, you know what they were saying? We were seven-day Adventists and we're this religion and we're that denomination and not religion, but you understand, we're this denomination, we're that denomination, we're this denomination, and we're that denomination. And everybody's sitting in the room and everybody is, is in one mind and one accord. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you what God is doing in the earth. The Bible said that when he said how precious it is, when the brethren dwell together in unity, it releases the anointing that destroys every yoke and every bondage of the enemy. And when we start coming together in unison to do what thus says the Lord get ready because that's what the Bible said God says I will command my blessing there the enemy has to make a plan I got to try to do something to stop them so then that's why he uses a tool called fear we just came out of you know all this with this pandemic and everything that was going on two years of fear Induced everywhere you look, fear, 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 fear. You can't. I mean, even now, you if you watch the news, everything is is tried at fear shortages. You, you know this and that. It's a tool that the enemy uses, because you know what fear does? It paralyzes. The Bible says fear bringeth torment, but perfect love casts out fear. In other words, when something that is in you, see guys, this is what the enemy is afraid of. 
If he can get, if he can get you to, to doubt yourself, this is why, guys, and I, I don't want to get ahead of myself tonight, but I feel this right now, so I'm just going to share this with you. If the enemy can get you to doubt his call in your life, if the enemy can get you to doubt and say, I can't do what he does, I can't, God's not asking you to be Pastor Michael. God's not asking you to be me. We need you, your generation. You, he needs you. God is not asking for a parrot. God is asking for the original copy. He, you, there is thing, there is an anointing and a call on your life that is going to move your generation. And if he could get you to doubt, if he could get you to fear, if he could get you to second guess, if he could get, you know, all of that, what does it do? It paralyzes you. It stops you. One of the greatest things that happens is the fear of the unknown. I don't know. What's the number one thing that stops us from doing anything? I know me personally. I've never done that before. I don't know. And I'm going to share that out of the book of, uh, of Joshua here in a few minutes. But the enemy has to come up with a plan to try to paralyze God's people because he knows if they get this thing right here, they're going to turn the world upside down. If they get this thing right here, every word that I'm at, I'm about to be dis- I'm about, I'm about to be booted out. I can no longer control this. I can no longer have this territory anymore. Can you say amen? This is what he's afraid of. He's afraid of you. I said, he's afraid of you. And so this is, he said, I got to come up with a plan. And so he, he, and this is so what Pharaoh did is he, he tried to, you know, get them under subjection. But then God raised up, hallelujah, somebody that was called. And I don't know why I'm hitting on this right now, but I want to say this. And this may be for somebody or for somebody that may be watching that I don't care because here's what happened. Here's what happened with Moses. Moses was, was born to be the deliverer of Israel. And I don't want to get in how he tried to do it in his own flesh or whatever. But when he, when he saw the fire and he turned aside and he got on that holy ground and he got his marching orders from God, amen, he tried to tell God, I can't do that. What you're calling me to do, I can't do it, for I'm a man of slow speech. Amen. And their, their enemy is always wanting you to look at what you think you can't do. I can't preach like that. I can't teach like that. I can't sing like that. I can't play like that. I can't do. He wants to tell you everything that you can't do. And you know what? Us by ourselves, we can't do it. But with God, we could do all things through Christ. That strengthens us. You can do it. Hallelujah. And you're going to do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I said you're going to do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I'm just trust me here. Psalm 105 and verse 24 in the King James Version concerning the people of God. God increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. The only problem was they didn't know it. I said they didn't know it. Pastor, can I bring her, bring her here? Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, every, I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. It's not by accident. Everything that God has told you to do, you're going to do it. Lift your hands as you do. The presence of God increases fire of the Holy Ghost. That's it right there. Never the same again. Never the same again. Everything is burned out. Every lie of the devil is burned out of your life. You're going to do what God has called you to do in Jesus' name. There's a strong calling on her life, Pastor. You, you, I, I'm t- the difference is this. The difference is this, guys. I'm telling you, the devil knows that you're stronger than he is. I'm telling you, God knows that because he's in you, you're stronger than the devil is. The only thing is, Pharaoh knew, the Egyptians knew, but God's people did not know. God had to send somebody to let the people know, hey, there's a God that lives on the inside of you that has given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People have come in... If you're not used to a service like this and this is your first time, just stick it out. God's good. Amen. I want to read this to you. Praise the Lord. Guys, if the devil can just convince you 
And if he can convince us that we're just sinners saved by grace, if we're just lowly worms, that we have nothing to offer, then we'll never try to do anything for God. But I'm here to tell you that's not who you are. You're not just a lowly worm. You know, can I, and I don't want to get into this because I'll start preaching a, a, going into a, a different direction. But I, I, want to, I want to tell you this. God is not looking for servants. He's looking for sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Religion will tell you you're a servant. Religion will tell you, oh, if I just go back, I could be a slave in my father's house. Guess what? God has a robe for you. God has a ring for you. God has sandals for you. Amen. He's looking to embrace you as a son and as a daughter. Hallelujah. Let's look at Judges, please. How many know who Gideon is? You guys know Gideon? Hallelujah. Judges chapter 6. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People were like, hey, you, know, you know what's funny to me? Is that I grew up in a church where nobody laughed, everybody cried. And I always thought it was funny because God, the Bible says, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. In his presence is fullness of, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You want to know how you know God is here? First of all, there's more than two. And then what, what, what you realize is, is that when the presence of God is truly here, he'll give you joy Hallelujah for set. He will make a garment exchange with you, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. The Bible said in, in Judges chapter 6, it said, Then the angel of the Lord <laughs> came and sat beneath a great tree of Oprah, <laughs> not that Oprah, Oprah, <laughs> which, <laughs> which belonged to Joash, the clan of Ab uh, Abiezer. Gideon, the son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the wine press from the grain of the Midianites. Now I want to stop right there because the picture that is being drawn is what? What is Gideon doing? He's hiding. What is Gideon doing? He's trying to eke out just a little bit. I want to share this with you. God is not interesting with you, interested with you just getting by. Can you say amen? God is not interesting with just meeting your needs. God, according to Ephesians 3, 19, 20, and 21, he said, I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. When God goes to bless you, it is always more than you will ask. Ask God big and watch God bless you to the overflow. I love this story because the Bible said that Gideon, he was, you know, it, this, this is a story, unfortunately, a lot of the body of Christ, not a lot, but some of the body of Christ, where it's just like they take two steps forward and they feel like they're taking three steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. Two steps, well, you're never going to get anywhere. And that's how the devil wants it. Because if he could get you keep taking two, you're never getting to the promised land that he is obtaining until you get there. Gideon. Just trying to, God, God, if you'll just, if you've ever preached that, stop it. If you've ever prayed that, stop it. God, if you'll just. God isn't looking to just. God is looking to blow your mind. God is looking to fill your cup to the overflow. He fills all things everywhere with himself. He hates empty vessels. I said he hates empty vessels. The first miracle he did was, was six stones that were empty, six stone pots that were empty. And what did he tell them to do? I don't like empty things, fill them up with water. It's the joy of your salvation. With, what, with, with joy will you draw from the wells of your salvation. But guess what? God don't want you to just staying there drawing joyfully because, it's never, because that, that means you're just getting blessed. God wants everybody to get blessed. Can you say amen? So it goes from a well to a river of the new wine of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
And that's the graduation of that miracle. What a wedding gift. Huh? What a wedding gift. I don't know how much wine costs because I don't drink. And I don't know how much it costs, but the Bible didn't say it was box wine. It didn't say it was Willie's wine from the Circle K on the corner. It didn't say it was Ripple. It said it was the finest wine. Now, I don't know, but I know that there's some wines worth some millions of dollars, depending on how they're aged and made and all of that stuff. So when, the, when, the, when, the, when the, uh, the guy that was running the feast, when the Bible says when he tasted that wine, he said you, they, he, they've saved their best for last. That's you. That's, I said that's you. Whether or not you realize it or not, that's you. That's me. That's the last day remnant that God has saved the best for last. You know, there's people that we sing that you know, song. Well, you guys don't sing it. We don't sing it. These are the days of Elijah. No, they're not the days of Elijah. They're the days of you. The Bible said Elijah was a man of light passions just like we were, but he prayed. And the Lord held back from rain three and a half years, and he prayed again. And there was a flood. Hallelujah. And that was in a lesser covenant with lesser promises. What can you do? What can I do in these days that we're living in? Can you say amen? Gideon was threshing out. God, if you'll just, God, if you'll just pay this, if you'll just help me pay this bill. God, if you'll just help me pay my car note. God, if you'll just help me pay with the rent this month. God, if you'll just help me with the phone bill. That's not God's will for you. I said, that's not God's will for you. God wants to increase you in such a way that you're paying people's bills. Hallelujah. That's the blessing. And I want you to, but see what, what provoked, all of a sudden the Bible says, Pastor, that an angel showed up while, while Gideon is eking out a living. Because every time that they tried to do it above without hiding, the Bible says as soon as they got, the enemy came in and stole it. Now there's a teaching there, but I'll let your pastor do that. But you should be tithing. And you should be giving. And it'll stop all that foolishness. It, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. So, so is, that, is that my end? Okay. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing, brother. <laughs> Pastor's like, yeah. <laughs> so he's in there. But I want you to notice the first thing that Gideon said, guys. The angel of the Lord said, highly favored of God, mighty man of God. And you know what Gideon said? The first thing he said, Pastor, and this is what let me know while he was eking out a living, you know what he was thinking? We're better than this. We're your people, God. We're your people. We're not supposed to be down here eking out a living, hiding, running from the enemy. We're not, what, what's going on? And when that angel showed up and called him, what he called him, how God saw him, you know what the first thing he said? If we are your people, then God, where are your miracles? Amen. You know what provokes a move of God? That right there. That's right. When people look at their DNA, when people start looking at their royal bloodline, and let me just tell you this, I don't care what you were. People love to tell their testimonies about where they came, and that's fine because you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. But I want to share this with you. If, if, if your testimony is, you know, about, and everything about your life is what color you are. And before Christianity comes your skin color, well, I'm a black Christian and I'm a Hispanic Christian, you know, and I'm this. There's no such thing as a black church. There's no such thing as a, that's why I love your church right here, because you guys have a representation like we do at our church. Our prayer is, is that God, you know, if we pray that prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as there is in heaven. There's not a black section in heaven. There's not a white section in heaven. There's not, you know, my kids would have a hard time knowing which section to go to. They'd be like, like. <laughs> just, just some thought. But if we are to truly be a representation of heaven, it's this right here. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation is a representation of heaven. And this is another thing that, that the enemy does to separate the body of Christ. Can you say amen? So your bloodline, once you get saved, you become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, the Bible says you're forgetting the foolish. All of that stuff that was behind, you're, it's no longer who you were. 
So one of the things that the enemy tries to get you is he'll try to bring your past up. I'll hear, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor. So this will be our 11th year preaching the gospel. I'll be preaching just as I am right now in, in the enemy. You know what he's called? The accuser of the brethren. Brethren. You know what he'll do? He'll pop something in my mind that I did when I wasn't serving God. And he'll say, look at you. You're preaching the gospel. And don't you remember you did all this? You know what you have to do? You know what he's hoping you're going to do? Get paralyzed. Get into doubt, get into fear, get into unbelief. Well, you know what? You know what? He's he's right. That's why the Bible says, when the enemy comes in and that thought comes in, casting down every thought and imagination that tries to exalt itself up against the knowledge of God. Don't play with that thing. Throw it down, and tell the devil who you really are. Amen. And tell him to go back to hell where he came from. Amen. You don't put up with the foolishness. Don't, don't, this is, the, this is, but you have the mind of Christ. Can you say amen? amen? By the washing of the water of the word of God, your opinion leaves and God's opinion steps in. Amen. amen. And we walk by faith and not by, that's how things go. The enemy wants to tell you why you can't do it. By faith, by faith, they obtain the promise. Isn't that what it says, pastor? So you got a whole section of people that right now in heaven, they're called, we are surrounded right now. The Bible says by a great cloud of witnesses. You know, the only thing that gets God's attention is when we're doing what God says do. Because they don't care about the other stuff. Are you here? People go, well, are the angels looking over the banisters? I believe they are. But only when we're doing what God's called us to do. They're, they're clapping us on. Come on, finish well, finish well, finish well, finish well. We took the baton and we're going to finish the race. Amen. We're not coming. We're not even trying to. We're going to win the race. Can you say Amen. So this is what this is all about. Man, Pastor, you better give me a clock. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's right, right? That clock. Okay. It says 804. It says, okay. So, because again, we don't, we, see, in our church, well, you guys are like us, so you probably don't care. In our church, they always have, we only have a starting time. We don't have an ending time. When the Holy Ghost is done, we're done. Amen. So you always want to know when people, when, where people are in their relationship with God, the number one question they'll ask is, when do your services get out? Think about that. Why are we so quick to want to leave the presence of God? Anybody that's ever been to the river, which I know there are, this church is full of river people. We've been to, we've been, we, we don't get, you don't get out till like 2.30 in the morning. And yeah, seven, eight hours long. And then you're rolling on the floor. You're drunk driving home. I get, Cheryl, Cheryl has recordings of us driving under the influence of the new wine of the Holy Ghost laughing hysterically all the way. She's hitting dividers and every, like, you know, the bumps on the in-between. <laughs> It's hilarious. I'm telling you, we got, we got stories. Like, we came back one time, and we had, like, this much water on the floor. There was a pipe burst in our, in our uh, hotel room when we got back. Everybody was leaving, and they were cussing, and well, I hope you guys aren't on this side of the hotel, and all this. And they're leaving because we had, they had to get everybody extra rooms. We come in, and we're just like, what? And I tried to be mad. Cheryl was like, she was trying not to laugh. She was like, <laughs> And I'm like trying to be mad. Well, this is ridiculous. And then, and then I, I just go, I just forget it. Because there, there's when you come out of the true presence of God, what can the devil do? Amen. And the Bible said, when the thief be found. See, this is when you really know who you are in God. That this is why every the only language that the, the devil knows is the strength language. People love to talk about love, and that's in there. But God says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. But listen, what is he, how does he start it? But power, love, and a sound mind. The enemy only answers to power. That's why Jesus said, how can one, unless a stronger one comes, how can you bind the strong man? When you have the strength of God on the inside of you, no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. John 10.10, 10, the gospel in one verse, the thief has come. This is why when people go, well, God's so good, why don't all these bad things happen in the world? Easy, genius. Easy. You want to know why? Because there's a thief. <laughs> Thieves never go. Where, sorry. Easy, uh, sir or ma'am. They, 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 because there is, a, there is a thief. Thieves never go where they're supposed to. But the Bible said when the thief be found, he has to pay back seven times. So anytime the enemy does something that's illegal and you know it is according to the word of God, you should start shouting and thanking God that the seven-time blessing is coming on what the enemy overstepped in. So this is, I got like, we got 
like he has way better river stories than me, but we got our own, we got a few that's funny. But so when Gideon, he says, so where's the miracles? The Bible said that God called him and he, and so the story goes, he said, you're, you're a mighty man. We're going to lift you. You're going to deliver God's people. We know the story about how they started off. Uh, with, with, with so many men, God said, nope, too many, too many, too many, too many. Got them all the way down to 300. Told them how to do that. But right before they released them, the Bible says something very interesting. He said, if you're still afraid after what I told you to do, I want you to go down and I want you to, to hear what they're saying about you. The Bible said that Gideon, they went down and they, and they listened at the campfire of Midian. And they're listening. And they're listening and he heard one of them say to the other, I had a crazy dream last night. I saw a bran muffin. I don't know if it was a bran muffin or not, but it, but it was like rolling down. And then all of a sudden it just crushed our tents and everything around it. He said, oh, that's Gideon. That's Gideon. The Lord has given us into his hand. See, the enemy knows, but he don't want you to know. But God wants you to know. Hosea 4, 6 said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And the Bible says it's not because it wasn't available, because it was available and you didn't go after it. That's why I love Matthew 5 and 6. The hungry and thirsty are the ones that get filled. People want to say God's a God of justice, and he is. But one thing is, is God's not a socialist. And he's definitely not a communist. I know people don't like that, but it's still true. He takes from the one that doesn't use it and gives to the one that does use it. And he'll skip over a thousand people to get to the one that has faith. Emotions don't move God. His word moves him. Amen. It's not that God doesn't, he doesn't care that we're emotional about stuff. But I'm going to tell you, emotions will fool you. Can you say amen? Ask Isaac. It felt like, that's a sense. Your senses will fool you. Are you, are you following me? Amen. Well, I feel like, what is your feeling? It's a sense. What did Isaac do? Well, come, come closer and let me feel you. Your senses will fool you. It'll fool you. And that's why the world is in an uproar right now because everybody wants you to validate their feelings and feelings don't trump facts. Facts are always facts, no matter how you feel. You can say two plus two equals five all you want to, but it doesn't mean it's true. You say, like, I feel like it means that. It doesn't matter what you feel like. And your feelings, will, will they'll spin you out of control. The enemy will run you by your feelings. That's why we don't operate by sin. What the Bible, the, what, what doesn't make sense, we say this in our church, and, but we, what doesn't make sense makes faith. We don't walk by, by what we see in the natural, what we feel. If you do that, you'll, you'll, you'll be in a mental hospital, especially today. Yeah. Amen. The only thing that we do is what's out of this word. The only thing that comes out of this mouth is here. Life and death are right here. The Bible says, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, or, or life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life so that you and your children might live. Whatever you say out of here is what you're going to get. Either way, either way. Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24, you shall have whatsoever you say. Here, here's the thing. People, people don't want to believe that or whatever, but, but did God ever want the, the children of Israel to have a physical king in a man? No. Did they get one? Why? Because they continue to ask for it over and over again. It wasn't God's perfect will at all. God's their king. Can you say amen? amen. God wanted the nation to be a key of kings and priests. To show the other nations of the world what it's like to have a God like him. Amen. That's what God's doing according to Revelation chapter 1. For us, we're kings and priests in the earth. Can you say amen? So, when, so Gideon actually came down and he heard the enemy say what God told him already. I'm afraid of Gideon. It didn't matter what Gideon felt like. There was fear in the sight of the enemy, but the enemy just didn't want Gideon to know it. And the devil don't want you to know it. And if he can stop you from the unknown, if he can stop you by looking at what you think you can do, man, I'm telling you, the anointing can make help you do anything. Amen. That's why the key is, before you know, we get saved, that's why the Bible says, wait in Jerusalem until you were endued with power from on high. Then you will be my witnesses. 
That's why you got to get filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why you got to stay under the spout where the glory pours out. This is why you got to stay filled up to the overflow every day. Can you say amen? Let's look at Joshua chapter 1. Is this still all right? Joshua chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Praise the Lord. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Your pastor already said this today. Wherever you set foot will be on land I have given you. Do you see that? Do you see the tense in that? When I say tense, it mean, I mean T-E-N-S-E. Is that how you say it, Pastor? The tense of that, it's, it's not I will give it to you. Are you seeing that? It's I've already given it to you. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains to the north, from the Euphrates River to the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one, say no one, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. You are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land that I swore their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from, the, uh, from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything that you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be, so you will be sure to obey everything that is written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you will go. Powerful. Now, God is making a promise. He said, you know, it's, he's a covenant-keeping God. Can you say amen? God keeps covenant. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you and I accepted Christ, the Bible says, then we become Abraham's seed and heirs to the promise. This is why people that don't believe in prosperity, people go, well, are you a prosperity preacher? Times a thousand. If you don't want prosperity, I'll take yours. And here's the thing, this is when we're talking about struggling. If the church continues to struggle, how are we going to be the answer to the world's need? They're going to the government. It's the plan. The government, we want the government, they want the, every, all of us to go to them for anything. It's the plan that they're setting up. Your, your pastor tells you all about everything that's going on. You guys aren't in the dark. You guys eat good around here. Amen. You know what's happening right now. You know what's happening. There's a system that's about to be, it's, it's all, it's, amen. But we're in the way, 2 Thessalonians 2.7. The spirit of Antichrist has to operate in secret because of we that are in the way. The enemy can't do what he wants to do because we're here. Can you say amen? So, th so th this, is th this is how all of this is, is, uh, is being set up. If the enemy knows that he, can, that he can bark and stomp his foot and do all of these things to get us to, to, to balk, you know what I mean by that? To hesitate. You, you hesitate. There's certain, you know, when it comes to warfare, they told us there's a three to five second rush. It's warfare mentality. Three to five second rush. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, get down. If you don't get down, you're dead. Cheryl and I crawled under live fire. If you stick your head up, the bullet's going to go through your head. You know, you, get, you don't realize how, how small you can make yourself when there's, when there's rounds that are going right above you. Are you here? So that, so th this is, this is the thing. This is a real thing. You hesitate. So, but when, if the enemy, he could stomp his feet or whatever to try to make us to worry about it. But God wants you to know, like we, like we've been talking about since the beginning of this message right now, God says, I'm with you. Be courageous. Don't back down. Go forward. Anything, anything that stops you from forward progression is not of God. The anointing of God continually is moving you forward. The Bible says the righteous shine brighter and as the noonday. 
that we are continually to climb higher and higher. Amen. I don't know if you're here today, but you're, the days of your ups and downs are over. I said the days of your ups and downs are over. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's a story that I love in the Old Testament. I think it's around 2 Chronicles. Pastor will know off the top of my head. I can't remember. It's First or 2 Chronicles. But this is what the enemy said. We know that their God is a God of the mountains. But he is we, but we don't believe he's the God of the valley. And so what we're going to do is we're going to attack him in the valley. But bless God, they found out that God is not just the God of the mountain. He is the God of the valley as well. And whatever the enemy thought he could possess, he lost it as soon as you and I got there. He don't want to be dispossessed. That's right. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 4. Watch this, guys. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's back up to verse 3. I want you to give, he's giving instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, it's the presence of God, guys. The presence is the Ark of the Covenant. How many's following me? Old Testament Ark of the Covenant. That was where the presence of God, when the presence showed up, they knew. Even the enemy knew. It's over. And so he's, and, and so this Ark is, is moving forward here. And he says, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, it will guide you. What's one of the things that the enemy tries to use to God's people and, and, and to try to stop us from moving forward? What's the one of the number one things, number one tools that the enemy tries to use against any of anybody? God's people are not anybody. People that don't want to learn new things. Why? It's because I've never done it before. I've never gone this way before. And this is what God was trying to reassure his people. You have never, you've gone around in circles and you've done this and you've done that and you haven't seemed to get anywhere. But I'm telling you this day, I'm taking you by the, leading by my anointing i'm taking you into an area that you have never been before i'm telling you today god is wanting to move you if you will believe him to move you into areas that he has called you to move in and god has already made a way where there seemed to be no way he's gone before you to make the crooked path straight hallelujah the enemy wanted you've never gone this way before the enemy will try to use that well i'm god i don't know I, I don't know about that. No, I, I don't know. And, and this and all of the, the so-called reports and all of this stuff that was going on. God wants you to believe him. Amen. And I really thought this was important. You know, they're, they're concerning what, what we're doing here, I'm telling you, you guys are, I don't want to misspeak and God forgive me. You guys aren't going to, you guys, you, you, it's going to go like this. You guys, right, right now, I'm telling you, there is not enough room in this room to hold the harvest that is on its way. I'm telling you right, I'm telling you right now, get, get ready for increase. There, God is going to continue to move and continue to move and continue to move and continue to move. And I'm going to tell you, I was praying for you, Pastor, and you're doing well. I'm, I, I, in my, I know there's a lot of things that, yeah, you know, this ministry is doing that, this ministry is doing that, this and that. You, the, the Lord spoke to you. Pastor Michael is doing it the right way. He's doing it well. He's doing, I'm telling you, every time I come, the man of God increases. He's telling me, God is doing this for us. God is doing that for us and all of this, let the shine and the smoke happen. Bless God. God is raising up a remnant in Redlands, California. Hallelujah to shake the very gates of hell. Doesn't matter that you haven't been here before. These are areas that only the Lord has ordered your steps to go. And he's bringing the people with him. Can you say amen? God said, whatever you put your hand to will prosper. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, I have already given it to you. That's why the enemy tries so hard to keep you from moving. Because he knows once you step on it, it's over. It's over. If I could just put enough giants at the border, if I could just get enough threats, then they'll stop in their tracks. We've, I don't know. All of these things. Because he knows once your foot hits that ground, it's over for him. It's over. That, that's why he's barking so loud. 
That's why the threats seem more and more like they're coming. That's why things seem to shake or whatever. I'm telling you, man, if I, 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 it, this is one of the things like, and I'll give you an example. Got people will come and say, Pastor, you know, let's pray and let's agree over this situation, this circumstance. We pray and agree. And we know according to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15, we are confident that we pray anything according to his word that he has heard us. And if he has heard us, he will answer us. Man, I'm telling you today, God is not a prayer hearing God only. He is a prayer answering God. Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. People think prayer is a religious exercise. No, it ain't, brother. It's a nuclear weapon that God has given us to move. Hallelujah. Things out of our way. You, 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 we just realized that. I mean, a pastor talked about it. We just pray, we've just we been praying for 50 years. We saw God move the mountain of Roe versus Wade out of our way, brother. And I'm telling you, it's not the last mountain that is about to move out of God's people's way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's trying to keep us out. But how many of you know the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, gates are a defensive mechanism, not an offensive mechanism. Gates are meant to keep people out. And the gates of hell are shaking because God's people are waking up. I feel Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, raising up in my spirit, a white arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The Bible says, yeah, there's going to be darkness, but great light. The Bible says, just when we're talking about the people of Israel, the Bible says, yeah, there was darkness down here. There's all these problems going on in the world, but the Bible says, up in Goshen, there's light. None of the plagues that got on the people down here got on the people of God up there. Do you know that? Do you know Psalm 91 is for you? That no sickness, no disease shall come nigh your dwelling? Do you know that God is not a God that'll just take sickness from you if you get sick? He's a God that'll keep sickness from you? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's called divine healing, that's right. If the devil's in your finances, if he's trying to mess with your health, if he's trying to mess your marriage up or lying to you about your children, he's on borrowed time. Every area that the enemy's tried to keep you out of or tried to try to run amok in, put your foot there. I said, put your foot there. Get there. Call it out to the Lord and trust the Lord that God is with you. I'm, I'm telling you, God's not going to turn this thing around. He's going to turn it upside down. Move mightily Amen. and move very quickly. You're going to see God, and he already is moving, but you're going to see that the Bible says his coming now is closer than when we first believed. God's coming is very soon, very soon. And, and so what's going to happen is God's, you're going to see God. The Bible says the glory of the knowledge of the glory of God will fill the earth like the water covers the sea. Are you with me? So God's going to move very quickly throughout the earth, and you're going to see a rapid, mighty move of God. Amen. And so, and, and so every lie of the devil is, is going to be put to shame in Jesus' name. God has an army. Hallelujah. Stand with me, please. I'm going to read from the book of Luke. Has this been all right? Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Luke, chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. In verse 13. It said, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. <laughs> this always makes me laugh because this is right after Jesus came out of 40 days of fasting and prayer. Are you guys following me? He was in the desert. He was tempted and tried in all ways yet without sin. But the funny thing to me is that, is that the Bible doesn't fail to mention the fact that the devil tried and couldn't do it. But he said he's gonna, it didn't say he just gave up. It said he's going to try in a more opportune time. Amen. So, so it's not that the enemy's not going to try to, you know, come back. He's just going to get the same result over and over again. Amen. However many times he wants to get his head kicked in, that's up to him. Amen. And so, uh, in th this, but this is, this is what happened after Jesus got done. Verse 14 said, then Jesus returned to Galilee filled with the Holy Spirit's power. There's the key. 
Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his, boy, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath, stood up to read, and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him, and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives will be released, the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The Bible says, and the Lord said, and today, say today, that this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Religion will tell you you're one day you'll get here. One day, one day, one day, one day God's going to do it. One day God's going to do it. You go to a conference and they'll tell you one day your season will get here. Guess what? According to Psalm chapter one, we, we, you can have, everybody else can have seasons, but seasons don't affect the child of God like it affects the rest of the world. The Bible says that blessed are they that do not stand in, in, in the counsel of wicked sinners and all those around. But the Bible says they are blessed and produce fruit in every season. Well, I'm going through a dry, I'm going through a dry season, Pastor. Well, stop it. That's some good godly counsel right there. We produce fruit in every season. If the enemy can get you thinking that God is only a seasonal God, you'll only wait for your season. Your season will never get here. You know, you, you want to know how confident Jesus was about seasons? He went to a fig tree on the, when it wasn't even time for figs to come, and he went to go get figs. Because Jesus always expected to receive when he went to, when, when, when he went to go get something. will be known by our fruit. The Bible, so that, that's all biblical. The Bible says Jesus went at a time, to, that it wasn't even the time for figs, but Jesus expected figs. What does he say? That, that seasons don't apply to the true body of Christ. That we produce in every season. Can you say amen? And you gotta believe that and you gotta know that. No more, if you had a dry season, it was yesterday. Hallelujah. God is raising up a people today. And this is, when, when God made this, made this declaration, it blew people's mind. And they're literally, all of a sudden, then see what happens is the word of God, which never fails, Isaiah 55, 11, it does produce that which God sent it to do. He said, is my word not like fire? Does it not go forth like a hammer breaking down every hard place? What am I doing right now? Just throwing fiery hammers, brother. Because the Bible said out of Ezekiel 36, he said, I'll take that heart of stone and I'll turn it into a heart of flesh and I will place within that heart my spirit, my spirit, and I will enable you to do those things which pleases me. God came to make an announcement, and I've came to back up that announcement, to remind the body of Christ here in Indio, or here in uh, Redlands, California, hallelujah, and in Indio too, our church knows this all the time, that you're not waiting for the year of the Lord's favor, you are in the year of the Lord's favor right now. It's the year of jubilee continually, right, Pastor? Continual jubilee for the body of Christ. Well, I'm just suffering for Jesus. Well, stop it. This is good counsel. Amen. This is how my, my counseling sessions are real quick at the church. Amen. Amen. So this, this is, you know, the, the, this is what, you know, Luke, and you've already heard, heard me quote it. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. You're going through stuff or whatever, or whatever you're going to come out as pure gold. Trust God. Praise the Lord. The quickest way to get out of whatever the devil's trying to put you under is to praise the Lord. Never let the enemy see you sweat. Never let the enemy see it. Don't let him, if, don't let him make it, let him, don't, if it's a tear, let it be a tear of joy. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the quickest way, if he tries to do something against you, it's about to turn around for your good to save much people alive. Our God's a good God, can you say amen? I don't care if you're in the bottom of a prison and there's blood dripping down your back, it's a privilege. I said it's a privilege to be persecuted for his name's sake. Isn't that what the disciples said in, in, in uh, Acts chapter 4 and Acts uh, chapter 5? They're going through, they were praising God for the privilege, the privilege of being persecuted for his name. That's right. And they said, Lord, hear their threatenings, but give us more of what got us in trouble. That's right. 
Give us more boldness. We're not trying to duck our head. We're not trying to hide because you know what? The next city has already heard the word. And I'm here to tell this, I'm here to tell this church, they've already heard about what you did in San Bernardino. And get, you know what the enemy is saying in Redlands? They're already feeling the effect of it, Pastor. These that turn the world upside down have come here also. The devil's been put on notice in Redlands. The devil's been put on notice already in San Bernardino. The devils are still shaking right there. I'm telling you, the devils in San Bernardino are taking psych meds right now. Amen. And the devils, the devils that are trying to stay here, they already know it's over because, Pastor, you guys have already put your foot on it. It's a done deal. Hallelujah. So I want to come and share this word with you today. God's not going to give it to you. He's already given it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything. I don't care if nobody's ever done it. Let that, let that be your sign, Pastor. Nobody's ever done this before. Well, bless God. That's why we're here. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. See, you have to be able to say something. Never let the enemy say something without talking back. That's right. You know, my mom didn't appreciate it when I was young, but I'm good at it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She said something I always felt like I had to get the last word, you know. And that wasn't a good thing, so I'm not saying, don't, you know, do that. <laughs> but even when she said something, and she don't say nothing back. I'd be like whispering something, like walking away, <laughs> try to get the last word. But I, we shouldn't do that. That's a, that was me. So learn, learn from my mistakes. But never let the enemy have the last word. Can you say amen? Here's what Paul said. What now shall we say to these things? The enemy is going to have something to say. City councils are going to have something to say. Governors may have something to say. All these people, they may have something to say, but what are you going to say? Because the only thing that holds effect is what you say. And what I say as sons and daughters of, of God in the earth, it doesn't matter what laws they try to pass or don't pass and do all of that stuff. They're not the ones that are in charge. We're the ones that are in charge. We're the ones that bind and loose. Hallelujah. And we loose the word of the Lord over Redlands. We loose the word of the Lord over your family. We loose the word of the Lord over your finances. We loose the word over your, over your body if you need healing. We loose the word of the Lord. Whatsoever you need, that's what he's going to do for you. What now shall we say to these things if God be for us? He's more than the world against us. Everything isn't going to get turned around in your life for, the, for your good. It's going to get turned upside down. It's going to get turned upside down. Everything for the glory of God. And people are going to come and they're going to say, and they're going to give God glory for what they've seen God do in your life. And then they're going to want to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light because everybody needs a king like Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Lift your hands all over this place. Father, we thank you that you're good. And that your mercy endures forever. We thank you, God, that for your love. We thank you that you didn't leave us down here just to get our head kicked in by the devil. We're not survivalists. We're not escapists. <laughs> We're here to take over. We're here to declare what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. We're here to enforce the rule of heaven. And we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, we shall condemn. We give you glory and honor for this privilege of being the last day believers. We worship you. We bless you. We glorify you. We give you praise ahead of time for everything that you're doing. God, I thank you for this amazing church. I thank you for these, these mighty men and women of God that, you, that you've allowed us uh, to come into relationship with. And God, we will shake California. We will shake California for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody wants to write California off, but we're shaking this for you and for your kingdom. We're, we're not giving up our, 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 our bean, amen, our bean sprout patch. We're here to fight, hallelujah. And we're not going anywhere until revival breaks out in Jesus' mighty name. 
Turn it upside down, God, for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I don't know. I just want to make sure I never like to close the service without making sure that everybody in here is saved and on your way to heaven. I'm going to ask you to lower your hands very quickly, please, if they're, if they're up. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior, I'm not inviting you to a religion. I'm inviting you into a relationship with God. If you don't know, God forbid, that if you would die today, that you would wake up in heaven. If you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would go, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to lift your hands and we're going to pray with you and, and pray a prayer of salvation with you. And you will know Jesus. You'll lay your head down on a pillow and breathe deep, knowing that you're going to be with Jesus. Rapture or by the way of the grave, either way. By the uplift of hand, you would say, Pastor, pray with me. I don't know Jesus Christ, and I want to know him. I want to know that good, good God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. We believe everybody's saved and on their way to heaven. Now, everybody, look up here at me. I love you. Thank you for the privilege of being able to allow me to come and preach the word of God to you. You're beautiful people. God bless you. Have a great night. Holly, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. You may be seated for just a few more moments. We'll let you go in just a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 It's funny that uh, Pastor James brought up the light in Goshen when there was darkness in Egypt. Because all day I heard in my spirit, and then shall they know that God has put a difference between us and them. Hallelujah. Amen. And in this last hour of time, the Bible prophesies. This was a very prophetic message tonight. Very, very prophetic message. And in this last hour of time, if you don't mind, Mr. Kenny, in this last hour of time, I'm telling you, the Bible makes it very clear. Pastor James already quoted the scripture. Then shall you know the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who serve him not. Amen. I brought this up on Sunday already, but I feel to bring it up again. You know, I'm not big for just regurgitating conservative talking points from the pulpit to get some cheap applause. Because as I said on Sunday, you can be a conservative politically and still split hell wide open. And there's a whole lot of actually political, you know, conservative people that have gotten social media famous off of uh, just repeating talking points. And they're not saved. But they can get Christians to buy their merchandise and all. And uh, so I don't, I don't just say things just to get some sort of applause. Amen. But I'll say this to you. It is important to note in the body of Christ right now who is a minister, well-known ministers, that refuse to celebrate the victory of Roe versus Wade. You need to pay close attention to that. Because the Bible says, Then shall you know the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who serve him not. Can you say amen? amen? Michaela, can you unmute the keyboard on the soundboard? Thank you. Hallelujah. And so I want to say this to you tonight. We're on the winning side. Yeah. Amen. And don't, don't take some defeatist mentality. Because as Pastor James said, there are more that are with us than are with, than are with them. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. There's a lot of displaced Christians right now. In 2020, their church shut down right when their whole world got rocked and they haven't known what to do since. But the Lord's gonna start gathering the sheep into folds, amen, with shepherds that won't leave the sheep when the wolf shows up. Can you say amen? Hallelujah, and so we're gonna see, we're gonna see an explosion in the body of Christ, amen. 
Our best days are not behind us as children of God. Our best days are ahead of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And I'll tell you, don't worry about gas prices. God's got enough money to fill your tank. Hallelujah. Don't worry about food shortages. If God could make a tree appear overnight for a grumpy prophet named Jonah, he can feed you. Can you say amen? Now learn a lesson from Jonah. Don't complain because then the tree God gave you will die. <laughs> amen. But the Lord's going to take care of you. Say that tonight. Say the Lord will take care of me. Say this. Say the Lord will take care of everything that has to do with me. Because the righteous have never been forsaken. And their children have never begged for bread. Amen. Even if your kids don't serve God, God will take care of them just because just because of you. Amen. And it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Hallelujah. 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 And take it from me. I'm somebody's kid, and I wasn't serving God for a little while, but God brought me back in, and I am all in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Before we let you go tonight, we're going to give you an opportunity to give, and before uh, we hand out the offering envelopes, tonight's offering is going to bless Pastor James and Pastor Cheryl, and so we want you to give generously tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you, before you before you write out whatever you're going to give, I want you to ask the Lord what, what he'd have you to give. And then just be obedient. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We're going to give you an opportunity to give. I'd like the usher to come and hand out the offering envelopes to you tonight. Go ahead and make out your checks. If you're making out a check tonight to Truth and Triumph, we'll make sure that everything that comes in in tonight's service goes to them. And whatever comes in, we'll add to it as well. Hallelujah. If you'd like to give online tonight, you can give. The instructions are on the screen here. You can give by PayPal at paypal.me slash truth, the letter N, triumph. You can give by Zelle, 951-536-1803. Don't call me at night. Amen. You can give by Venmo, at symbol, truth, the letter N, triumph. All one word, at truth and triumph. You can give. Uh, by Cash App at dollar sign truth the letter in triumph, all one word, dollar sign truth and triumph, or you can give by text 628 444 4136. Text the word give and the number of the amount you'd like to give, like give one million. I'm sure, Pastor James would like to receive a check with two commas in it, he'd be happy with that. Amen. Hallelujah. When you send that text, you'll receive a text back with a link. Tap that link, it'll direct you to a page where you can enter your card information. And you can hit Remember Me on the bottom of that page so you don't have to enter it again. If you're giving online, uh, I'd like you to put in the memo, Guest Minister, or in the drop-down menu, Guest Minister, just so we can keep track of everything. Otherwise, I'll just take everything we got and give it to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This might be our biggest Wednesday night crowd we've ever had. Hallelujah. Amen. This encourages me because when God told me to start Wednesday nights, there were five people, and my wife and I were two of them. Amen. And my mommy was number three. I still call her mommy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, you weren't there. You had to watch Grandma when we started Wednesday nights. I wouldn't leave you out, Daddy. I like you. Amen. My dad would have to stay home and watch my Grandma. Hallelujah. God said, start Wednesday night services. Five people showed up. I said, God, are you sure? But look what the Lord has done. Amen. Some of you in here tonight have been with us since we started the revival services in the hotel meeting room. Amen. Actually, I think of Miss Beverly. Her girls asked her, what do you want for your, was it birthday or Mother's Day? 
Christmas. They asked their mom, what do you want for Christmas, mom? She said, I just want you to come to church with me. For a year, she said, that's all I want. Come to church with me. She said, come to church with me for one year. So the girls agreed. And I think it was their first Sunday, the Holy Ghost touched them. Amen. And now we've got Ruby on the camera back there, just graduated her first year of Bible school. Amen. And her twin sister is in Tampa now. She also graduated her first year of Bible school, starting her second year soon. Hallelujah. No telling what God's going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, how many of you here have heard of Lester Sumrall? Oh, if you haven't, go on YouTube. Yeah, Sherry, Sherry Newell, right? Probably served him coffee and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Pastor Ken was under him, right? So if you've never heard of Lester Sumrall, you need to go on YouTube tonight and search Lester Sumrall, mighty man of God. But Lester Sumrall used to tell people when they came to the church, he'd say, give me one year. And if in one year your life isn't turned around, you never have to come back. And he said, everybody who took him up on that challenge, they always stayed. Amen. Doesn't take long for God to do something mighty. Amen. Well, I'm not as great as Lester Sumrall, but I got the same Holy Ghost. So I tell people the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just looking at you. Y'all look so beautiful. Amen. I'll tell you, a Wednesday night crowd is a special crowd. Because Wednesday night, in the middle of the week, you could be doing anything else. You chose to take the time to come into the house of God. So I always, I always have believed there's a special blessing for the Wednesday crowd. Amen. I always say this, don't be an SOB, Sunday only bunch. Amen. Hallelujah. And that might have offended, that might have offended you, but you'll remember it. Amen. Wake up on, <laughs> wake up on Sunday. I don't want to be an SOB. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And there's coming a day in this last hour where churches are going to stay open 24-7. And it's just going to be continual worship and preaching of the word, worship, preaching of the word. Amen. People will just come in and get saturated with the presence of God. Supernatural miracles of every kind. Amen. And when you said that about city council people, I felt that. And governors. But I've got a friend who already stood down a whole state all by himself. So if they give me trouble, I'm just going to give you a call. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor James's name in my phone is boyfriend problems. Because I have a daughter. And one day she'll probably want a boyfriend. And that, if that boy ever causes problems, I'm going to call Pastor James or Pastor Cheryl. She's a better shot. But see, pa Pastor James used to be a cop, so he'd know exactly what to do to get around the system. They'd never find that boy ever again. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, that's not what Jesus would do. Well, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> Amen. How many here have seen the movie John Q with Denzel Washington, where he takes the hospital hostage to get his son his surgery? My wife and I watched that last night, and I was like, if I took a hospital hostage for Eliana, would you support me? She went, oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. And as a dad, you feel it. You would do it. I'd do it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Y'all ready to give tonight? Father, in the name of Jesus, first and foremost, I thank you for the precious gift that you allowed us to receive from tonight. The anointing on this man of God and my friend. 
Father, I ask you that you would cause tremendous growth and increase even in his realm of influence, Father. In Jesus' name. Let the remaining six months of this year be the greatest six months that Church Unlimited has ever had in the name of Jesus. Let their numbers double. Let the anointing manifested in the services double. In Jesus' name, let the finances and resources coming into the ministry double. Let them find a new place, Father. You have the perfect location in mind already. Show them in his spirit and then show them in the natural, Father. And open every door in Jesus' name. Bless the gift and the giver tonight, Father. Every person giving to this ministry, cause there to be an expedited harvest on their behalf. For your word declares, Father, that you give seed to the sower. You give bread for eating. You multiply the seed sown. You increase the fruits of our righteousness and you cause us to be enriched in everything unto all generosity and the increase of our generosity results in greater thanksgiving being brought to you. And that's the cry of our heart, Father, that our life would bring maximum glory to you. So we thank you, Lord, for it tonight in Jesus' name. Wherever every person is in this room financially tonight, let this be the smallest they will ever be in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for it. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. I just felt to tell you this really quick. Keep an eye on that land. Pastor, what are you talking about? It's not your business. Should have pulled the mic down. Amen. How many are happy you came tonight? How many of the Lord blessed you tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. The bucket's coming down the way as it is. Want to give you a quick reminder. Of course, Sunday morning here in this room at 10 a.m., we have child care available as well. And, uh, and then I also need to let you know that our middle of the year church fast Middle of the year. I oh, know nobody ever claps for a church fast. <laughs> but our church fast, middle of the year fast, begins on, and some of you uh, haven't heard the new dates yet, but I moved it back just a little, uh, be begins on July 10th through the 16th. So we're going to be fasting one week together, July 10th through the 16th, and I'm going to be preaching on it this Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God, because we're going to see mighty breakthrough in this area. Amen. Uh, and then, of course, School of the Bible. One person's excited. That's phenomenal. <laughs> School of the Bible, session four. I'm going to be teaching on pneumatology, the study, the study of spirits, the Holy Spirit, the human spirit, angels, demons, Satan, and why he's always been a loser. Amen. School of the Bible starts on August 8th. Hallelujah. And so mark that in your calendars. I'm very excited for that. Did it say first? All right, the first. August 1st. August 1st. I was wrong. August 1st. Hallelujah. My wife must have changed the date on me. August 1st. That's when she wanted me to start. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we have another special announcement that we're not quite ready to make yet. So don't ask me about it. Amen. Stand on your feet with me tonight. Let me bless you before you go. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you can hit him if you want to. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. What was ministered tonight, let it resonate in the spirit of every person. Let it be branded on their heart, Father, that they have the ability by the Holy Ghost to turn the world upside down. Activate every person in this room into the calling 
and the vocation and the destiny wherewith they are called, that every person in this room would fulfill the totality of the plan you have for their life. May it be said for them, as it was of Joshua, that not a single thing that you called them to do went unfulfilled. All of it came to fruition. And we thank you, Lord, for that tonight. I bless them as they head their way. May the last remaining days of this week be filled with blessing and power and answered prayer. In Jesus' name, we receive this by faith. And everybody said, I love you. God bless you. I will see you on Sunday.